What's up guys, JV2017 here, and today I am continuing my Fallout 4 pre-release content. The countdown continues as we're only 19 days away from the launch date, I'm so excited. And just a quick reminder guys, this is your number one hub for Fallout 4 content here on YouTube. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and stay tuned on my channel now and when the game comes out on November 10th. Today I want to focus on power armor in Fallout 4 for a few reasons. Number one, power armor is super iconic in the Fallout world. It's been there since the beginning and it's very, very important. Secondly, power armor has changed in a significant way when compared to Fallout 3 and New Vegas in Fallout 4. And since we don't know everything about power armor just yet, this video will be a mix of my observation from what we do know and pure speculation. And what we have observed comes from Bethesda's own gameplay exploration video where they have a nice power armor sequence in Concord. So I left a link in the description below if you haven't seen this video because I will be making plenty of references to it in this video. First, let's talk about the function of power armor because it's way different. It's no longer a wearable item that you just find out in the game world. You pick it up and you throw it in your pit boy in your inventory and you're able to put it on and off, you know, whenever with the click of a button. It doesn't work like that anymore. Your player character actually enters the power armor kind of like Iron Man and Tony Stark and pilots it. And I like to say it's kind of piloted like a vehicle. The way it functions, just the whole operation reminds me more of a vehicle than just actual armor. It's this huge kind of mechanic suit that you operate similarly to a vehicle. So some key things to note, your character is still in its normal armor that you had before you entered the power armor. So you're in your normal armor when you're inside the power armor. And also, this is a temporary state. There's no way we're going to be walking around the world in our power armor the entire time. It's very temporary because it's very, very powerful. If you watch that video, you know, you're able to take on a Deathclaw, which seems like a very formidable opponent in Fallout 4. So the key thing to take away here is that it's a very special mechanic. Power armor is super special. We're not sure when we're going to be able to use it yet and how readily available it will be. I'm, I highly doubt we'll be able to just throw it on and tackle the hardest quest in the beginning of the game. That just doesn't seem like something Bethesda would do. Power Armor also has a unique interface. When you jump in the Power Armor suit, like I said before, you get this unique HUD that pops up. You have several things that are displayed on it, like your hit points, which is your health, your radiation levels. You even have a spotlight you can turn on and off. That's shown in the video. You have a power core, which is what operates it, at least to my knowledge. And you have action points displayed on kind of like a gauge, like everything else. And then you have your ammunition. So it's kind of in this orange tint. I kind of dig. It's like this different mode, kind of like a vehicle, like I just explained. And from the video, we can tell that the power armor loses a ton of health when the Deathclaw hits it. I don't know what that's about and how that's going to be addressed, you know, how viable is power armor when you're fighting a Deathclaw? And if you don't have power armor, how are you even going to be killing Deathclaws? We have no idea. So when you see the spot, it says spot in white letters, that's the spotlight. That's something to keep in mind. Also, there's a ton of ammunition in the Vertibird minigun. That's what the player actually grabs in the gameplay that we have. And I'm not really sure, is the minigun the only weapon available in the power armor? Because it absolutely does not seem like we're gonna be able to access our pit boy and just, you know, hey, let me just equip a pistol or a rocket launcher. We have no idea. So I'm really curious as to which weapons will be available in the power armor. And just seems like, uh, you know, minigun makes the most sense, but I hope there are more weapons we're able to grab and use in our power armor. Now let's talk about how you operate this thing. How do you actually use your power armor? And very clearly in the video, we see the player character inserting what looks like a power core to operate the power armor and we don't really know how this core operates we don't know if it drains from just using the power armor or from moving maybe there's a sprint uh, we don't know if it's drains from using the spotlight or a jetpack we have no idea there's a lot of speculation out there we can very clearly though see that the power core is inserted in the back and turned and then the power armor opens and you're able to use the power armor so from the video, also, I noticed that the core seems to drain very slowly, either on a time limit or just from movement. There's a lot of speculation out there that maybe it drains quicker when you use the spotlight or the jetpack. I really don't know if those are sound theories. I haven't seen anything 
that uh, really points to that for me. But my general theory that makes the most sense is there's just a time limit. There's just a time limit on how long you can stay in the power armor. And I'm just gonna say, you know, it sounds like five minutes is a reasonable amount of time to stay in your power armor maybe even less. And there's also a number of cores, it says 11. So we don't know if you can just swap cores and just keep going, or if there's like a core charge amount, we have no idea. This again is mere speculation, but it's interesting to see that there's a very specific mechanic going on with the power armor in this game. And finally, we can customize our power armor. It's so amazing. Each individual piece is customizable within the workshop, which is this iconic place where you can, again, work on your power armor in the game. And it actually shows you the stat values on the lower left side that change with customization. And there are a lot of different values here, and you can actually also apply mods to each piece of your power armor. There's so much customization going on in this game, it's crazy. So some of the stats that I notice are damage resistance, and damage resistance is broken down into three different categories. The first one is just general damage resistance, so I think that's just bullet fire or melee damage. The next is energy resistance, maybe that's from you know laser weapons or plasma pulse weapons, we don't really know yet. And then also radiation resistance, of course, you'll be able to bring your power armor hopefully into radiation zones, that's what it sounds like. And so that's an interesting piece there. The next stat that it shows is health. Obviously, each individual piece will uh, you know, affect your health, hopefully. There's also a mysterious thing that kept popping up whenever the person was scrolling over each individual piece, and I think it was over the torso, or maybe it was the helmet, I'm not sure, but it's PA bat dam rate, which I think means power armor battery damage rate, and I think that means uh, there's gonna be something we're using inside the power armor that drains a battery. And I think that's separate from the core. I think it would say core if it were uh, related to the core. And my kind of speculation here is that maybe we have a battery for our spotlight and jetpack. That makes a lot of sense to me. Maybe there's some fuel for our jetpack. I'm not really sure. So the next stat values that it showed are weight. So maybe there's a weight limit. I'm not really sure about that. And also value, if we want to go ahead and sell a piece of our power armor to somebody and uh, get some money from it, I'm assuming, and I don't know, are you allowed to carry your power armor pieces in your Pip-Boy? That makes me think you can carry them in your Pip-Boy, which doesn't make sense to me. So anyways, we'll just have to see when the game comes out. On to the mods. So there are actually mod slots, which are very similar to the weapon customization little piece they showed in the E3 uh, premiere there. We'll have to see what they do. I also saw a headlamp option to put on a helmet, very cool. And also different paint jobs you can put on your power armor. And one of them actually increased strength. It was military paint. So it increased that strength stat, and I have no idea how strength relates to what you're doing in your power armor. So there's a lot of crazy stuff going on here, and I'd like to know what kind of speculation you guys have about all of it. Don't forget to leave your comments and questions in the comment section below. And that's all I have for you guys. Today we focused on power armor and how it fits into Fallout 4 so far. Next time we will cover more Fallout 4 information here on my channel, so stay tuned for all of my pre-release content. And remember that this is your number one hub for Fallout 4 content here on YouTube. If you have any ideas for something you would like me to cover in a future video, be sure to leave it in the comments section below. If you learned something new from this video, remember to hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. And stay tuned to my channel for continued Fallout 4 pre-release content, and of course, when the game comes out on November 10th. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.